and welcome to Strider. In this tutorial we're going to set up a character with a basic Strider component script. I'm going to go briefly over some of the settings and we'll just get something going. So first things first, let's open this uh, gameplay demo scene which is found under plugins, animation uprising, strider, demo scenes and gameplay scene and let's just disable some things. So I'm going to go to the camera, disable Cinemachine Brain, I'm going to disable the existing Ellen character here and I'm also going to disable um, the canvas just so we don't have this UI in our way. Okay, so let's um, now drag a character model into our scene. I'll go to Models, Ellen, this is all under the demo, and I need to be in Scene View, and we'll put it there. Now before I set this up, let's get another package from the Package Manager. You don't actually need this, but it's good for your understanding. So go to the Package Manager, you'll need to show preview packages, and we'll grab the Playable Graph Visualizer. So this Playable Graph Visualizer allows us to see the back end of what's going on in Unity's animation system and it's good for your understanding because you'll see where Strider lives in that environment. Okay, so the Playable Graph Visualizer is installed and we can access that by going to Windows, Analysis, Playable Graph Visualizer. I'm just going to put it here for us and we can see this is actually an animated controller so our animated controller on our character actually turns into a graph like this behind the scenes um, so let's actually go to our new character that we've created and i'm going to find an animated controller i'm just going to take this compare demo anim controller that's useful on the demo scenes and we're going to throw that in there now let's um, add a component and the component we're looking for is called strider biped now for Strider, pretty much everything revolves around this component. There's not a lot of components and it's a um, very simple asset. However, there's a lot of functionality um, and polish underneath this component. So we'll add the Strider component. <clears throat> and the first thing you'll notice, we'll close all these foldouts um, and we'll just look at these references, is that the references have been filled for you automatically. Now, if your animator component is on the same game object as Strider, it's gonna fill in automatically. This just allows you to uh, apply stride warping on a different game object if you want to do that for some reason. Also, because our character is using a humanoid rig, uh, the hips and leg transforms are all set up automatically for you. Uh, and they're grayed out because of that reason. You don't need to worry about left foot IK and right foot IK because that's only for a specific IK method uh, using Unity's animation rigging package, which I'll explain a little bit later. So we actually don't need to worry anything about anything here unless you're using a generic rig, in which case you will have to fill these references yourself. Um, so there we go. However, there's not really too much that we have to do here. I'm just gonna hit play actually. Okay, so now that we've hit play, we can see that the Playable Graph Visualizer has changed something for our Ellen Animator Controller here. And we can see we've still got this Animator Controller structure that we saw before. Unfortunately, it is very much a preview package and that's why we can't see it very well now. There we go. You can see our Animator Controller. But we've got another layer here and this is actually Stride Warper Playable. And in, for this particular IK method, it's just modifying the root motion um, and running some logic in this uh, Logic Playable. Now, you don't really need to understand that, um, just know that if you are going to do any sort of animation programming alongside Strider, this is kind of where it lives, um, in the playable graph on a second layer to the animated controller. So that is, um, that is basically that, uh, and that's the playables that are used is going to be dependent on the IK method. So, we've added our Strider component and we haven't done anything, but it's already working. Um, we just need to change the speed scale and we can see our Strider goes longer and our Strider goes shorter. Now, from here on, using Strider is just the same as using the animator to change the speed of your animations. Instead of calling animator.speed equals two or whatever, you just say Strider biped dot speed scale equals two and it will set that um, that is how you use strider it's again it's very simple to use with a lot of functionality and 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 polish that's gone to make it not jittery and and all that 
Um, so let's have a look at a few more settings because obviously there's a lot more settings than just the speed here. Um, and some are, I'm gonna point out the most important ones and I'm gonna leave things like the stride style uh, for something you can read through in the manual um, and play around with that. Uh, one thing I will do is I'm just gonna set this hip damping to one um, because we wanna have, I'll explain some of that. Okay, so starting with the base settings, we've got our speed scale, we already know what that does. And um, here is our weight. Now weight is a way that we can blend out the stride scaling effect smoothly. Now there's actually some, you probably never need to change this yourself, it's here just for demonstration really. But at runtime there's two functions that you can use, it's called smooth enable and smooth disable. Check that out, I think it's section 4 of the user manual. Um, Instead of literally disabling the Strider component like this, we can smoothly disable it and uh, Strider will automatically manage um, actually disabling the component. This is so that you don't get any jitter because like, if you see that, it just pops. We don't really want that. So that's what the weight is for. Size compensation is something that we can use to compensate for different scales of characters to make them all walk at the same speed. You've seen it in the Size Matters um, uh, demo scene, um, so I don't need to explain that completely, but basically if you've got a character scaled up, you could just change the size compensation and they'll take, you know, a bigger character is going to take smaller steps you can see and a smaller character will take bigger steps. This isn't something you should change at runtime, um, you should just set it at the start. Now it's not just for scaled characters, it could just be a character that's bigger because, um, because they're a bigger model but maybe you want like this giant monster to walk with some kid uh, and they use the same animations. Well, you can figure out what is the best compensation scale value for that giant so that you can walk with the, the, the kid and maybe the kid scaled up a bit, um, something like that. Or if you have a character creator and you can literally just um, do it based on the scale that people set in your character creator. So that's that, speed smoothing and stride smoothing is something you're not really going to change much. It's basically how smooth we change speed at runtime. At runtime we don't ever instantly change the speed scale, uh, we, uh, we tell it a desired speed. That's what happens when you change the speed on Strider and Strider in the background will, will smoothly change to that speed. This is to avoid popping and uh, stride smoothing is also a similar thing. Uh, it basically when we move the stride pivot point, um, which we do in the back I do in the background for a number of reasons it's smoothed by this value higher values give uh, obviously um, more smooth transitions le less chance of IK popping um, but but more foot sliding lower values um, the opposite so this is just a good in between we've got root motion we can turn it off and on it's off at the moment I'll turn it on for a second and off our character goes uh, we don't really want that so let's, uh, let's bring our character back we just want to see our character for now now you can override this and do your own root motion, turn it off and then do your own if you want. The root motion uh, that comes out of the animator from you know animator.delta position or something like that is actually modified in the playable graph by Strider. So you can just use, you can just implement your root motion as normal. You don't need to worry about the scale that Strider is giving it. Next we have our warp direction mode. Now um, it's pretty simple when we, using strider we can we warp the stride in the direction that the character is moving um, so in this case we have animations that have root motion in them and therefore we use the root velocity now just to be clear you don't have to be using root motion to use root velocity uh, you just your animations just need the root velocity uh, root motion for this mode to work it is the best mode if you do have root motion um, alternatively, you can use actual velocity and Strider will just keep track of your character's actual velocity and use that vector as your stride direction. So basically those two are the most common. You can do it manually, I don't recommend, and you need to code for that, or character facing, which is not going to be a very good quality unless you're using a... Um, yeah, it's just not going to be very good quality. So there's that. Uh, finally, for the general settings is our IK methods. Now, there's a number of different IK methods. However, I do recommend using the built-in ones. Uh, so this one's built-in. Um, they're all using jobs uh, in one way or another and burst, but this is using animation jobs and this is using normal jobs and it's applying the IK in late update. Both have their advantages. I kind of like the light, light, the late update version. I know people think animation jobs are super fast. Sorry, they aren't. Um, 
they aren't very fast. Just that's all there is to it. Um, they aren't as fast as you know normal jobs. So we also got Unity IK. This is um, Mechanism's IK. So you can use that. Now keep in mind, I'm changing this at runtime, um, but it's not designed to be changed at runtime. So you might have errors. I've just made this functionality just so you can check it in the editor. Um, so Unity IK. T, this is basically going to use Mechanism's IK, and for it to work, you have to have IK pass ticked on your layer that you're um, for Mechanism. So that, that, you know, if you're using Mechanism, um, you can use that option. It works just as well as the others. Um, so yeah, just make sure you have that on. It won't work if you're not using Mechanism. Lastly, uh, well not lastly, but we have animation rigging. This is for Unity animation rigging packages. There's a few nuances to get this to work correctly. Um, it's not gonna work for us here if we just turn it off. Um, change it because we don't have the rigging package installed or anything but basically you have to have your your left foot IK and right foot IK target game objects slotted here and you also need to enable um, the rig builder uh, through this callback instead of having it enabled by default because it needs to enable after strider that's very important not going to go into too much detail on that you can look it up in the manual but that is there for you. Finally, custom, if for some reason, I don't know why you would do this, but if for some reason you wanted to use an external IK system like Final IK or your own IK, you can make a custom uh, interface with Strider that will, you know, um, it, uh, basically Strider will ta tell you, tell your interface to, uh, it needs to adjust the hips this much and this is where the feet need to be and you can do your own IK. Just use built-in. <laughs> okay, so let's skip stride scale for now and let's look at the second most important settings. And this is your playback speed control. Remember, Strider actually uh, blends between both a little bit of speed control, like playback strip speed of the actual animation and stride warping. So um, this is where we set the limits. So the playback range. So we can go a, a minimum of 0 0.9 of the normal playback rate and a maximum of 1.1. So it's like 10% either way. We can change these values and which means it can go, you know, it can use a bit more speed. And you can see it is losing a bit more speed there, but it's also using stride strider. So as you increase this, you're probably going to get more speed and the stride's going to get less. Um, I like to keep it, you know, 10 to 20% either way tops. Um, the next setting here is playback rate, um, sorry, playback weight, and this is basically the rate at which stride scale and playback rate are used in proportion to each other up until these playback ranges. I like to set it at 0 0.5, it seems pretty good. Um, you can change it so that it's like, okay, well, if it's at 1, it's going to blend in playback uh, rate all the way up to your maximum before it starts doing striding. Uh, and inversely, it's, well, if you do zero, you're never going to get anything, but if it's really low, you're going to get more stride first compared to playback rate. I like to keep it at 0 0.5. So I think these are the most important controls um, for you to really understand. Um, callbacks, it's just a callback that you can call on setup complete. Anything that is dependent on strider, you can just add a callback and enable it or whatever you want to use that for. Okay, so the stride style, this may seem a little bit more complex, but um, I'll explain some of it and I'll let the user manual do the talking for the rest. So let's have a look at hip damping. So when we change the stride, when we stretch the stride out, we actually have a bit of an issue because we're going to have floaty feet. Um, so we actually have to drop the hips and you can see as I go slower, the hips are dropping and the actual movement is becoming more, because we're going faster, we're, we're bopping up and down less. And this is actually kind of realistic. You, when you sprint, you bop up and down less than when you jog or walk. So it is actually kind of realistic there. Um, but these hip, these three hip controls here allow you to adjust that. So the hip adjust cutoff. So this is just a flat out clamp, the maximum amount that you're allowed to, that strider is allowed to move the hips. If I set it to zero, you're going to see that even at, you know, three times speed, we get the exact same amount of bop. If you allow it to do, you know, 1.1, 1, 1, you're still getting some bop, but, you know, point, uh, allow it up to 0.2 or maximum 
So yeah, this, it's basically clamping and we can see maximum about there. I actually don't mind all that movement, so I'm going to set it to point, point 0.2, maybe point 0.15, just so we get a little bit of bopping there. That's nice. The next is hip damping. Now, this curve is obviously set to 1, but basically the, the actual hip damping is this curve sampled, multiplied by the hip damping curve. So one is there's no damping basically, we just allow the hips to move the full range that Strider wants to um, move them. Uh, if we say 0.5, it's kind of like, well, Strider wants to move the hips down 10 centimeters. Well, with 0.5, it's only going to allow it to move um, um, 5 centimeters, for example. Now, the curve is based on speed. So we've basically got a speed ratio. So basically down here on the left is, is your, you know, idle, yet you're walking and you're running. And to get the speed ratio, you need to actually set the maximum speed of your character. Here, my character's fastest speed animation is three meters per second. You need to set it to whatever yours is. It's not actually gonna change the speed. It's just for sampling these graphs. The next we have is the offsets. And the offsets is basically, I'm not gonna go into detail on the offsets because it's, it's probably not gonna be useful for most people. However, it can be useful for retargeting. But I'll show you just quickly. Um, the stride is based off a pivot point under the hips. Now that pivot point can be shifted forward and back to modify the style of the stride. Sometimes characters run too much out in front and sometimes too much out the back. And when we speed up the stride, it becomes noticeable in a bad way. So we might have a offset in one direction. You can see our characters now running more out the front. We've shifted the, the pivot point back. So it's pushing the legs out the front more. It's, Let's go extreme. Let's go negative one meter. And like, it, well, it's just ridiculous. You would never do that. Um, so, you know, way out in front, we'd probably change the um, the hip settings here quite a bit. Uh, but even with negative 0.5, I've used values between, you know, 0.0, .0 well, basically 0 to 0 0.3 um, on different character models. It really just depends. Now, it's the same thing, we've got a base offset. I really, I rarely use the base offset, but you've got a dynamic offset. So you can, you know, have a different offset while you're walking and running and all of that. So that's basically the stride style. You can look it up in the manual for more details. So I think we've gone through pretty much every setting on Strider. And yes, it is quite a simple asset with a few complex settings, but it's doing quite a lot to do this in a relatively smooth way. I'm gonna get rid of that. Um, just so you are aware, I do curve something like this uh, for for a general, you know, idle walk run. There we go. That's my normal settings for this particular character. Um, if you want to try it out. So there you go. That is Strider. I might do one more tutorial on coding with Strider, how to set the speed scale at runtime. However, it's all in the documentation section 4. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video.